Hello guys, this is going to be the first video in a series where we take a look at designing a PCB and getting it manufactured relatively cheaply uh, but still professionally in China. So the board I plan to do is another one of these uh, RC control boards. Now, I had a couple of problems with the first one, not really problems, just uh, wasn't as usable as I'd hoped. The main problem was that uh, the 1.2 millimeter pin spacing it's very hard to solder when you have it this tight so say you're trying to solder this row it would tend to bridge over to this one or maybe more so if you're trying to solder these pins in the middle you have tendency to accidentally solder one of the other two so with the new design I've tried to keep it separate so mostly I'm just using two pins to solder so you can bring your solder iron in from the top for the top pin and from the bottom from the bottom pin and that will reduce the likelihood of uh, getting solder jumping across the pins well it should reduce it a good bit the other thing I decided to do was instead of having the controller and our expansion and motor driver chips all on the one board I put the uh, the Atmega chip on a single little board and I put pads for to connect an SMD NRF24 on that board then there's just two rows of pins either side that'll bring the pins down to a kind of I suppose it's like a shield it's kind of like an Arduino shield but it's just a little smaller shield or a little smaller board so that means that we'll have a higher board but it should be shorter the benefit to that is we can still have this configuration where we have the motor driver and the expansion chip so we'll have all the functionality we have on this board we can also then just uh, make a slightly bigger board with two or three more motor drivers if we wanted for different applications. Another reason for me doing that is I think I'll be able to get the board uh, manufactured and assembled at some point and it be, will be a huge expense to do that because that's something I'd like to do on the channel to get a board sent off to be manufactured and assembled and then see what the result is because I've never actually done that so. I've only ever got the blank PCBs and soldered them up myself. Okay, so in this video I'm just going to show you the design end of it. So I am using a software called Eagle. And uh, all you have to do is basically Google Eagle PCB design and you'll see the software there. Uh, download that. It's a uh, free to use software but you're limited to a certain uh, size of PCB. I think it's 8 centimeters by 10 centimeters, but I could be wrong about that. So when you get the software, open up a new project and open a schematic drawn first. So basically you just need to pick your components, pull them onto the page here and then you can um, just join up the wires the way you want them really, that's all there is to it. Uh, let's see what we've we got here. So let's say we want to put on an LED. There's an LED, it shows you the size of the package there and the little schematic symbol. So we put that in there. Let's go for, let's say we want ground. You can get ground. And if we wanted VCC. Supply symbol. And then we'll want a resistor. So we probably want, you can see all the different packages coming up there. So we're going to look for an SMD one because we have an SMD LED. So uh, there's actually a package that will use both. You can either use a, a true hole or an SMD. So maybe we'll use that just for, just for the fun of it. So there is our resistor. Let's just move our components in where we want them. So you go over here to the move icon. You can see this little cross here on the component. So just click it. You can pull it around then. It's there on the LED. It's okay. And that looks about right. So another thing you can do is if you click this little thing, it gives you a little box. You click your mouse and pull it. Now you've kind of grouped all those items. If we go back to move, we can right click 
and move to group. That's another little thing. If you wanted to mirror an item, there's mirror an item. You can rotate. Copy, that's very useful if you're doing a big circuit. So you just copy your component, delete, delete your component. And that's the most of the ones that are useful, I suppose. Uh, this little symbol add here is for your components. So that opens up that. And you have all your libraries. You can download libraries very easily. So there's loads of different libraries there. That's the most of those components that you would normally be using. Uh, you then come down to here, net, that draws an electrical connection. So if we go to the contact points, it's it's highlighting them there. So highlight that, that's a connection made. Connection made, connection made. So that's our circuit complete there. And you can see that it's connected because if we moved around the different pieces, we can see that they're moving with them. So. So you can see that that's all connected there. Now that we have our schematic made there, we just need to go to uh, the board now. When you go up here and generate switch to board. So hit that and it brings up the board screen. So on the board screen, your components always appear down in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is your scroll wheel on your mouse. So just rotate it back towards yourself to zoom out and rotate it in to zoom forward so we can see our components here we can drag them on our led is tiny our resistor is pretty microscopic too but i see a problem here we've set vcc and we've set ground we haven't actually put in a connection so if we switch back to our uh, schematic we'll add in two pins for our battery connection we call it so i used vcc and ground here but well i'll show you a different way of doing it so uh, you, you don't really need to do that you could have just put in the two pin header um, and just connect it directly but since i've already put the vcc and ground in i'll just show you that it will connect it so i'm looking for pin head here because that's what i usually do is 2.54 millimeter pin header so there it is uh, we want two pins we're going to say it's just a battery or something like that so let's take that there and um, then we'll use our copy function mirror, copy copy over there's our vcc again and our ground make an electrical connection And we'll just save that. And if we go back to our board now, that should have changed. We now have our pin headers. That's going to be for our battery. So we'll throw that in there. We'll rotate this. You right click to rotate. So if we want to check the positioning, we can go right click on the little cross there. And then properties. See we're at 150, 150. Uh, let me just check what units were in here. So we're in mil. Let's go to millimeters. So I usually put it to 0 0.01. It's kind of like the accuracy of how fine you can do it. But when you're doing it from here anyway, it doesn't really make much difference. So we're at 4 mil, 4 mil. Properties. We'll put this one into, let's say, 8 in X and maybe 7, we'll say. That's not too bad. Then this Let's see we were about six for real. No, say ten. Bad. So that's the components kind of where we want them, but we can see our design area is much bigger than we need. Uh, you can see up in the top left corner there the dimensions so let's say we want to make our board about 12 by 14 mil so probably the easiest way if we right click up here we'll probably just go 12 and 14 i think got that backwards so it should be 14 and 
12. Ist okay. Bei ich dann hier und just change the bottom one. That needs to be 12. So, now that we have our board where we want it, we'll want to do the routing. So, we'll use the root manually here. You can use the auto router, but it's usually a little bit messier if you're on bigger boards. It's kind of better to do it yourself. But, um, you can always use the auto router if you want. When you select the routing by well the manual routing, you will have your options up the top here for what kind of angles you want. So let's say if we want to make a line like this, you can see that it starts to have that little bit of a kick at the end. So that's one option. Or if you want a, a straight line, although it's moving to avoid uh, contacting the obstacles there. Also have ones with curves. So you've lots of different options there. Just keep it simple. Most of it straight lines anyway. So, and if you want to change the width, so let's say we want to make this one uh, maybe point three. Make it the width of that contact there. Must be still a little bit bigger. Uh, that's about it. So that's kind of the full size of it. Well, that's a little bit big so let's change the size of that maybe we made that too big so let's just leave it at half that size uh, here. it's not a great component really it's taken from inside the pad well, I suppose it is kind of getting it but uh, the point is it's making the connection like we want anyway so I'll just change this back to 0.4 and why isn't that why is that refusing to go there let's try it from the other direction there you go okay so that's all the connections uh, connect are done on our circuit here so that's all our uh, connections there but we might want to make the top layer solid and maybe make it ground so we'll go to do a polygon there, so draw a polygon and we want a solid one. Then we we'll come along and we'll just draw it. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller so it's not so just so huge on the screen. Put down like this. We'll sort it out properly in a little while. Get it about there, there's our polygon. And like we did with the bounding box, we'll just go here properties. 12, 0, 0, 0. And up here, we'll just get this one 0, 14. And here as well 12, 14. And that should be everything. So, what we've done there is put this polygon on the top. Uh, check what the signal is so I think I can change it from here I'm gonna make a ground okay so I can't do that what you need to do is right click here and go name and go ground so now I think that's done it on all the lines so it's ground and that means if we go to uh, it would be rat's nest yeah okay so we go to rat's nest it puts in our solid layer which covers the ground connection here so you can see we're connected all the way there on ground and our signal is coming through here all connected around there but it doesn't connect it to any of our other signals so you see our little gaps around all our traces there but you still have your connection everywhere else okay so that's the little board done but what if we discovered we've made a mistake so we can go to uh, rip up traces and if you come up to the top here there's a little green light say gold that'll tell you will you rip up all the signals and you say yes brings you back to where you were so I'll just control Z to get back we have our signals there and 
I again do the rat's nest we're back to here so one thing I didn't mention is when you're doing a trace so we have selected manual trace here we can select whether it's on the top or the bottom of here so let's say start off here we want to start on the bottom of this pin but this contact is on the top so if I hit top here it gives me a via uh, we go from our via then we've now switched to the top you can see the red line and we can connect it in there so we're coming on the bottom here up through the via to the top layer then over to our surface mount component here which is on the top layer so that's how you uh, do a via it's very simple okay guys that's our little board design there uh, this video ended up much longer than I had expected so what I've done is split it into two videos and the next one is going to show you how to uh, generate your cam files that you're going to need when you want to send your design to the PCB manufacturer so that's all I wanted to cover in this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you did hit the like button and as always thanks for watching